Back in the day when I was learning how to produce, I would record a song and wonder why it sounded bad. I mean, well, not bad, but I couldn't pinpoint it. I was overlooking a big part of recording, EQ. Don't make the mistake I did. So why EQ in the first place? Well, you need to guide your listener's ear through your song to make sure that your hook cuts clear through the other sounds. Now, EQing can get very complex, but I'm just gonna show you the basics and a few concepts to consider so that you can get started. And I'm going to offer you a simple bonus tip to get your EQ right even faster. Now we're gonna put EQ8 on every track. Now I already have it on the other track, so let's just add it to this pad sound right here. Now we're going to watch, yes, watch the EQ plugin. It's showing us the frequencies that our sound is producing. Now you'll see on the left side are the lower bass frequencies, in the middle are the mids, and on the right side are the high frequencies. Do you see how the pad has some bass frequencies actually quite a bit of bass frequencies, and the bass and the pad just seem to be one and the same. Now let's remove the bass frequencies from the pad and let's see how it sounds. Now already that's making a difference. Now because I'm getting rid of all the bass frequencies from a certain point, I'm choosing this shape right here. Now you can choose other shapes if you need a bell curve, you can choose this. Now the pad typically sits in the mid range of the frequency spectrum, and you'll see that the pad that I'm using stretches across the whole thing. But it really should just be supporting the lead sounds, which in this part are the piano and vocals. So I've gotten rid of the lows, I'm gonna get rid of some of the highs as well. Now it's just gonna be showing the mid frequencies. Now we've made room for our piano and vocals, which are gonna sit in the higher frequencies. Here's a tip, pads are really useful for guiding the emotion of the song and filling in the space. So don't EQ them too much or you'll lose the fullness of the sound and the emotions of the chord progressions. You'll need to come back and tweak as you go along. Don't forget this important step. Listen, how does everything sound together? Are the instruments clear? Is the emotion still there? Tweak some more and keep experimenting. Now let's go to the piano sound. Now the piano in this song is playing a lead part. Let's take a listen. Now once again, you saw that there are bass frequencies and highs, but I really want this piano to shoot through the mix and really be the focus in this area in addition to those vocals. So I'm gonna EQ out the bottom end of the piano so that it doesn't conflict with our bass. Now let's hear it along with the pad chords and the bass. The pad chords, the piano, and the bass are very clear and are sitting in their own space in the EQ spectrum. Before we get to the vocals and my bonus tip, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you don't miss out on my next video. Also, hit that like button if you're learning something. So your vocals need EQ as well, and the same rule applies here. The vocals are the sound that your listener connects to most. So here's a quick tip for EQing your vocals. Remove all the lower frequencies. In fact, exaggerate it and then start pulling it back until you get to a certain point where the clarity and fullness of the voice comes back. Let's take a listen.
Now, another sound which often conflicts with your bass instrument is your kick drum. Now, side chaining is a great way to get your bass sound out of the way of your kick drum hits. It ensures that your kick drum, which is so important to pop, hip hop, and EDM, comes right through the mix. Now, I can create a whole video on sidechain, but you can achieve it with some plugins that you already have. There are some great methods that Manny explains in my video here. Check it out to get your bass and kick drums just right. Now, there are a lot of other techniques you can use to make your sound sit in the right place in your mix panning, widening the sound, and of course, just general volume are other important mixing techniques as well. We'll explore those in a later video. Now, here's my bonus tip. Choose your instruments right in the first place. Your songs will sound better and you can mix much faster by choosing instruments correctly from the get-go. In this song, my piano is creating a kind of hook and it's the lead instrument in addition to my voice. Now you saw it takes up the higher frequencies. So I'm not gonna add another bell sound in addition to the piano to the higher frequencies to this track. And certainly I'm not gonna play them at the same time. I typically start with a pad, then add a lead instrument like a piano, then the bass and my drums, and that's it. With these four, I can usually start to create a balanced mix where the emotion of the song comes clearly through. Thanks for watching, keep making the music you love, and hey, check out one of these videos next. See you guys later.